Make sure my hair is not looking like absolutely crazy. All crazy? I have like a hundred flyaways. Oh. Okay. Oh, it's recording. Yeah, oh. it's recording. <laughs> hey, y'all. All right, really cool series that I wanted to do with Karina. And so if you guys are subscribed to the newsletter, which you should be, if you're not here, subscribe here. Can we yes. add that in? Yes, we will. <laughs> We're going to add that in. Um, I don't edit these. She edits these, and I would have no idea how to do that. <laughs> um, so subscribe to the newsletter if you have not. But she did a really cool article on time-restricted feeding. But for those who like the audio way of learning um, and just in general we wanted to kind of dive a little bit deeper into different topics that we did on the newsletter uh, we wanted to go over that here so first and foremost why do you like why did you start researching a lot of this stuff so that would be interesting so um, I am basically just obviously interested in all of like biochemistry research I um, am a lab assistant at a molecular uh, pharmacology and physiology lab at USF and so we, She's smart. Uh, at, over the summer, we kind of have like this summer presentation series where the PI of the lab just lets us present on whatever we want. And so I came across the topic of time-restricted feeding because intermittent fasting is obviously like very um, popular in the fitness industry, right? So, and you'll find out that there's a lot of overlap between the two. Um, so yeah, I just came across this topic. I read about it in a few articles. I listened to a few podcasts on it. I was like, um, and then found out that, uh, like the benefits from this are like huge, like hugely important outside of even just like calorie restriction, just yeah, like restricting the time that you're eating can have, um, an immense benefit if you're, if you can't essentially, or you can't like track all of your calories or I thought that was healthy. the coolest thing was that yeah one? I think I listened to it first on one of Rhonda's podcasts yeah um so she talked about Rhonda Patrick talked about this with Joe Rogan on one of the podcasts she was mm -hmm. on with him and then she actually has two really cool podcasts which we can link in the description here mm -hmm. um on her own podcast and I listened to those and I was like this yeah. is like mind-blowing yeah and the like the grandfather of all of this research research is actually Dr. Sachin Panda for short he is a professor at the Salt Institute for Biological Sciences, which is like this like pretty renowned place for research over in San Diego. Um, but yeah, a lot of his research is kind of like the foundation of everything I have learned. And he also has an app which you can um, take part in his research. Oh yeah, that, yeah, they talk about that in the podcast, and it's really really cool. That two the two podcasts I was talking about um, actually interview him, so it's Rhonda right. and Dr. Panda. So. Um, really, really interesting stuff. His research you can take part in, which is really cool. Yeah. They have a ton of animal research, of course, but then now they've been doing all this human data yeah. as well. Um, and it's just really fascinating stuff. But we wanted to kind of cover this video, like basics, like what is time-restricted feeding and really how is it different than IF? Because like we kind of mentioned, that is pretty popular uh, or a lot of people know at least what intermittent fasting is or they think they know what it is. Mm -hmm. um, so I wanted to kind of break down what is high restricted feeding and then versus IF. Okay. <clears throat> so what is time restricted feeding? So if we look at a lot of um, studies in the experimental definition, time restricted feeding is basically a period of time that you are allowed to eat with zero calorie restriction. And if we look at that against intermittent fasting and all like the experimental definition, Intermittent fasting is typically done under some caloric restriction um, limit. So um, we're talking about in the research, right? In the research. So if you're looking at this in a research paper, and you're hearing people talk about it, that's going to be a big distinguishing difference. Is that there is a certain amount of time, like there's more of a time window, yeah. Versus IF is usually just time whenever, mm -hmm. like it's just like hey, do it, you know, only eat like 16 hour fast or 24 hour fast or right. three day fast, whatever it is. Um, and then there is typically calorie restriction present in research, yeah. but then the, the hallmark really of time restricted feeding, I would say, is that it's this window of time, but there is no calorie restriction yeah, per you, se. Yeah, a lot of like the mouse studies are free to eat ad lib whenever they want um, uh, versus the time restricted feeding group. So there's typically two groups in studies. Obviously there's the control and then the experimental group, and um, there's an ad lib group that can eat whatever they want, however much they want, whenever they want. And then the time-restricted feeding group also has the same exact, like, no restric restriction to calories, same exact mac 
macro breakdown of their diet, but are restricted to either Word nine time. hours, 10 hours, or 12 hours. I wouldn't say, I feel like from what I've read from them and listened is that it's typically 12, like nine to 12 hours, right? Right. It's usually the feeding window. window. Yeah. So the other th hallmark that I kind of took away from their podcast was that anything that is not water is no longer fasting. Right. So a lot of people who do IF will have coffee or like coffee with creamer, coffee or with butter. BCAAs. Yeah, whatever it is. And they have that earlier in the day yeah. and then they Even don't eat tea. till later. Yeah. And pretty much what they were talking about is so the one of the benefits of this is like you're not not digesting anything like your body's not going through the digestive process so even though there's not calories in black coffee or tea there are still things your body has to digest yeah. so when you're talking about the time restricted feeding window they're talking about literally anything yeah. that is not water because for like caffeine and even a branching amino acids these are compounds that your body has to biochemically yeah. break down and you know do whatever it needs to do with it so somebody might say like, oh, I'm doing IF and I'm only eating on a four hour window, but they've been drinking coffee all day. So in the time restricted feeding group from the research and everything, that wouldn't be considered, they would, right. they would, consider, they would still be on yeah. a feeding window. Right. Um, so typically, yeah, it's nine to 12 hours of feeding. And then the other time is fasting and truly fasting. So just water in that period, mm -hmm. um, which really isn't that bad. And we're going to do another video on like practical applications. So it really isn't that hard. And people are like, Oh my God, that's so crazy. It's really mm -hmm. not yeah. that I mean, challenging. If you like eat at 8am and then you say you go to bed at like 10 to 9pm, you just stop eating at 8pm. Yeah. 8 it's to 8. it's, it's 12 really, hours of feeding. yeah. And even if you know, you wake up and maybe you don't eat right away, you just have like some coffee or yeah. whatever. And then you're done. Like you're just done by eight. And again, we'll do the practical ones. I think that'll be really good. Yeah. Um, for how we both implement it. Um, and I do this off season and during prep. Actually, mm -hmm. I'll tell the story, but I started doing it in prep without even realizing it, like mm -hmm. before I even knew what this was called. <laughs> yeah. Um, like years ago, and I was like, this is way better. Um, but yeah, so that, I would say that that's probably the biggest difference between time restricted feeding and IF is that with the time restricted feeding, when you are fasting, it is just purely water. Correct. And then um, there's not, you know, the problem that I see with IF really. Not problem, but one of the things you can run into is some people will say like, oh, I'm not hungry earlier, so I'm not going to eat. And then they save all these calories up if they are people who are aware of their calories and like tracking. And even if they're not, I could see this happening. They just go and they eat everything at night. Right. Um, and we'll do another, again, video on this podcast, <laughs> video on like the kind of health side of it. But that can have a few problems, you know, and then from the just caloric side and the mental side you can like develop some kind of weird binging habits from that as well. Um, right. and I, or maybe not binging, but binge behaviors. Right. right? So and you, I've definitely gone through that. Like, you're like, Oh, I just won't eat all day. Yeah. Oh. I won't eat all day, but I like have to have my last meal at like 10 30, like while I'm under the covers and eating like literally right before I fall asleep. Yeah. Which is, um, from a neurological standpoint, like not good for a lot of reasons like it's not good for your brain and that might be a whole different video on like neurodegeneration that I'm like really into but um that's also like I don't I mean I know there's a lot of controversy about like carbs after dark won't kill you but insulin being super high right before you go to sleep instead of like where you need it to be like around training isn't the best either yeah so this is definitely going to be argued forever by everybody. Yeah. Like there's literally no way around it. First and foremost, yes, calories are incredibly important. If you're not in the right calorie balance for you and your goals, you're not going to see much progress. Of like course. that is caloric restriction is always going to be king. Yeah, that is like nobody is arguing that, right? Mm -hmm. But once you've gotten through that part and you're somebody who's tracking your food and you're somebody who's on top of your overall calories and your protein yeah. and everything, we're trying to get like precise stage exactly. lean. Yeah. like all these little details make a difference they do matter like they're not as big but they do matter so when people say like all oh, this kind of stuff doesn't matter it's just calories it's whatever eh, i would say that there is a good amount of research to show that there's reasons why you would want to do that yeah. so now not saying that you can't eat before you go to bed at all like you know like you know four hours before some people might do that um yeah but in general, stopping eating earlier, I've found, has really, really helped. Right. Um, like, digestion um, and overall how I sleep. Um, I know sometimes the argument is like, oh, eating before bed helps me sleep. 
but I would say that it might help you fall asleep, but I don't know if it would help you have better sleep. Like, deeper sleep. Yeah. No, I mean, at least from an anecdotal standpoint, yeah. if I eat right before bed, the next morning I feel, like, tired when I'm waking up. Mm -hmm. But if I stop my eating window, like, two to three hours before I fall asleep, I wake up feeling a lot more refreshed. And maybe when yeah. we talk about, like, the practical application of this subject, I can go into why that happens, like, yeah. more of the biochemistry that happens while you're sleeping and like what goes on in your brain and how like insulin degrading enzyme will like take away from you know your like memory recuperation during your sleep um yeah. there's but, a lot yeah. of reasons you know for all that so this is something again this is if you don't have your calories in check and you're not understanding total calorie balance you need to work on that first but i would say this we both support time restricted feeding and we find that it's fairly easy to implement and everybody can pretty much eat within a 12 hour window. I mean, right. and you might not without realizing it, like you might go over that and yeah. then just, just course correct it a little bit. Like it's really not that challenging. Yeah. Um, and you might have to make obviously some things work, right. but I've just found, um, that, yeah, I feel so much better and yeah. there's a lot of data on it, yeah. which is pretty cool. Like it was like, oh, this is actually has something yeah. behind it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's been multiple studies done on this and like, I think the most important standpoint of this is that like even if you know nothing about nutrition even if you like hate eating vegetables or like hate berries and like don't want like all the important multi like vitamins and all this stuff and you know nothing about eating healthy like you can at least tell someone hey just restrict the time that you're eating and you'll see benefits just from eating in a certain time window and fasting for a certain amount of time yeah and that is going to be our next video so make sure that you are, what is the thing on YouTube? Is it subscribed on YouTube? Is that? Yes. Make sure you're subscribed on YouTube so that yes. you will also see the next video and we're gonna talk about some of Karina's favorite research around this. 